continuing our talk on overview of ureitis, let us now deal with the clinical features of ureitis, anterior ureitis. The presentation here includes the classical trial of acute onset of pain, redness and photophobia. This may be accompanied by diminished vision or maybe not. Pain is caused by ciliary spasm, redness by conjunctival congestion and photophobia is abnormal sensitivity to light. Chronic iridocyclitis will have a variable presentation. So pain. Pain is due to ciliary spasm, the anterior segment of the eye including the cornea, iris and ciliary body are extremely well supplied with nerves and this is the first division of the fifth nerve. So any problem in this area usually give rise to pain. The pain of the anterior uveitis is distributed along the entire first uh, one division. Photophobia is abnormal sensitivity to light due to pain from ciliary spasm as well as meiosis. The pupil is constricted, sluggish reaction is there to light and there is ciliary spasm. All of this contribute to an abnormal sensitivity to ambient light. This is distinguished from glare which is sensitivity to bright light. Redness. Congestion occurs due to any causes of inflammation in the anterior segment of the eye. When it is anterior uveitis or iridocyclitis, this is called a ciliary congestion or ciliary flush. The specifics for this are that it is perilimbal or circumcorneal all the 350 degrees. It is in a deeper level than for a conjunctivitis and the color it is high violaceous hue rather than just red. Conjunctivitis alone would give a red color and a purplish hue would be seen in cases of scleritis uh, but in the case of anterior uveitis, it would be just around the limbus and would be violaceous in hue. All red eyes are not conjunctivitis. One of the most common differential diagnoses asked is what are the differential diagnoses for an acute red eye? Conjunctivitis is the most common and probably the most innocuous. But there are other conditions which result in redness and they are not conjunctivitis. Any inflammation in the anterior segment can result in conjunctival condition. Conjunctivitis is one, keratitis, episcleritis, or anterior scleritis, another group of disorders, iris, iridocyclitis, and cyclitis, and most important, acute angle closure glaucoma. The distinguishing features among these are the type of congestion, the color which I have already said, location of the congestion and the associated features. Signs in anterior uveitis. Anterior uveitis is inflammation in the anterior part of the uveal tissue that is iris and ciliary body. As in any inflammation, the vessels will dilate and there will be exudation of fluid and cells. This exudation will present in various ways in the cornea, aqueous, pupae and iris. These signs are best seen by slit lamp examination. The corneal endothelium, that is the back of the cornea, will have keratic precipitates, KPs. These are leukocytes from the dilated vessels of the iris in the ciliary body passing through the aqueous and settling or sticking onto the endothelium is a very specific for signs of inflammation. Aqueous itself is normally optically empty. It does not have cells nor does it have a significant amount of protein. This is how the media is clear. But in case of anterior uveitis, the aqueous will have cells in it 
as well as the protein in flux causes it to have flare. This is a picture of keratic precipitates. You can see them as multiple large irregular sized white precipitates at the back of the cornea. Anterior uveitis signs continue. Keratic precipitates can vary in number, in size or shape. We must be always large, we can be fine. In fact, fine problems more common than the large variety. And when they come and stick onto the cornea, the way they stick form of a base down triangle, we call it as the alt triangle. The type of KP is whether they are small or they are large, whether they look fine and white or large and lardacious or much in fat. It's has to distinguish between two types of uveitis, the granulomatous and the non-granulomatous. The proteinaceous influx which gives rise to the aqueous flare is based on the Tyndall effect. Especially can be compared to a large room with a small window, light coming onto the room and there is dust in the room, so this light beam is visible as well as the dust flying inside the light beam. That is how the aqueous flare appears. And those dust particles would be the cells. Aqueous cells detecting this is always detecting a sign of activity. Aerodocyclitis can be acute, chronic, recurrent in a remission phase. Now whenever there is cells that is an indication of activity. Here is another quick lamp photo. On your left side is the cornea and on your right side the bluish area is the lens. In between is the light beam traveling through the aqueous. It has a greenish hue here that is just because of the photograph. The smaller thicker arrow is showing the light beam lower end. Aqueous flare. The thinner arrow, longer, is pointing towards some dust-like particles and they are the aqueous cells, which are nothing but WBPs. What happens to pupil? Basically, what happens to iris? The iris is now somewhat like a waterlogged sponge because it is consisting of blood vessels radially arranged as well as muscle fibers they are also radially arranged except in the center, which is the sphincter, which is circularly arranged. When the iris musculature and the vessels are involved in this inflammation, they swell up and this swelling mechanically causes the pupil to get smaller. So there is meiosis. Not only that, the small pupil will not be able to this, uh, briskly react to life as a normal pupil would. So there is sluggish reaction. And finally, the iris has exudation and therefore becomes sticky. The closest structure to it, especially the pupil, is the anterior surface of the lens. And it tends to stick to the posterior surface of the lens. And this is called as posterior sign of you. These are extremely important telltale signs of uveitis. It can occur in fresh uveitis or anterior uveitis or it could be the only remaining sign of an old uveitis. Iris. As I said, it becomes like a waterlogged sponge, so it loses its normal architecture. Normally, there are a lot of scripts and the whole surface has a shine and the scripts are very clearly seen, but now the exudation fills up and the end result is a muddy looking iris. The iris may have iris nodules, these are granulomatous nodules and uh, not seen in the non-granulomatous type of uveitis. 